my wife lied about a business trip and cheated on me with a co-worker for six months. So, I teamed up with that man's wife to expose her. I never thought I'd be in this situation, but here I am. My name is Jake, 32 male, and I've been married to Margaret, 30 female, for eight years. We have a six-year-old daughter, Daphne, and until recently, I thought we had a pretty good life together. That was until last week when everything I thought I knew about my marriage came crashing down. We were both studying business at State University, and we first crossed paths in a marketing 101 class. I remember being struck by her confidence and quick wit. We were paired up for a group project, and over the course of late-night study sessions and coffee-fueled brainstorming, we became close friends. Our friendship slowly blossomed into something more. By the time we graduated, we were inseparable. We both landed entry-level jobs at Tech Corp, a growing tech company in our city. It was exciting to start our careers together, navigating the corporate world side by side. We'd carpool to work, have lunch together in the company cafeteria, and then head home, often stopping at our favorite local diner for dinner. Two years after graduation, on a crisp autumn evening, I proposed to Margaret at the same diner where we'd spent so many evenings discussing our dreams and plans for the future. She said yes, and we were married six months later in a small ceremony surrounded by our closest friends and family. Life seemed perfect. We bought a modest house in the suburbs, adopted a golden retriever named Max, and settled into married life. Daphne came along two years later, turning our world upside down in the best possible way. I still remember the first time I held her in my arms, this tiny bundle that somehow managed to capture my entire heart in an instant. For the first few years, we juggled our careers and parenthood, supporting each other through sleepless nights and busy days. We had our challenges, of course, but we always faced them together. Or so I thought. Things started to change about a year ago. Margaret got promoted to a management position at Tech Corp. I was thrilled for her, she had worked hard for this opportunity, and I knew how much it meant to her. But with the promotion came longer hours and more stress. She'd come home late, exhausted, and would barely talk to me. Often, she'd grab a quick bite and retreat to our home office, saying she had more work to finish. I tried to be understanding, remembering how stressful it had been when I first moved into a management role a few years earlier. I took on more of the household responsibilities, making sure Daphne was taken care of and trying to make things easier for Margaret. But despite my efforts, the distance between us seemed to grow. Date nights became less frequent, then practically non-existent. When we did spend time together, Margaret seemed distracted, constantly checking her phone. I suggested we take a family vacation, thinking some time away might help us reconnect, but Margaret said she couldn't possibly take time off work right now. Last month, Margaret told me she had to go on a business trip for a week. It wasn't unusual, she'd been on a few before. But this time, something felt off. She was oddly secretive about the details, and when I offered to drop her at the airport, she insisted on taking a cab. I brushed off my concerns, telling myself I was being paranoid. The night before she was supposed to return, I got a call from her colleague, Sarah, 28F. Sarah and I had met a few times at company events, and while we weren't close, we were on friendly terms. She asked if Margaret was feeling better. Confused, I asked what she meant. Sarah hesitated and then said, Oh, I thought you knew. Margaret called in sick for the conference. She said she had a bad case of the flu and couldn't make it. My heart sank. I knew then that something was very wrong. When Margaret came home the next day, I confronted her about it. At first, she tried to deny it, saying there must have been some misunderstanding. But as I pressed her, showing her the text from Sarah, she finally broke down. She admitted that she hadn't gone on the business trip at all. Instead, she'd spent the week with her ex-boyfriend, Henry, 33 male. Apparently, they'd reconnected a few months ago when he joined Tech Corp as a consultant. One thing led to another, and they started having an affair. As Margaret spoke, I felt like I was in some kind of nightmare. This couldn't be real. Not Margaret, not the woman I'd loved and trusted for over a decade. Not the mother of my child. But the tears in her eyes and the pain in her voice told me it was all too real. She told me about how she and Henry had dated briefly in college, before she and I met. They'd run into each other at a company event six months ago, and old feelings had resurfaced. At first, it was just innocent catching up over coffee. Then late night texts. Then stolen moments in his office or her car. And finally, this week long rendezvous while I was at home, taking care of our daughter and worrying about her supposed flu. I was devastated. I couldn't believe Margaret could do this to me, to our family. She begged for forgiveness, said it was a mistake and that she wanted to work things out. But I was too hurt and angry to even consider it at that moment. The trust that I thought was the foundation of our relationship had been shattered, and I couldn't see how we could ever rebuild it. I asked her to leave and stay with her sister for a while. I needed time to think, to process everything. Daphne was confused and upset, asking where mommy was going. It broke my heart to see her like that, to know that our little girl's world was about to be turned upside down because of her parents' issues. Now, I'm left trying to figure out what to do next. Do I try to forgive Margaret for the sake of our daughter? Or is this betrayal too big to overcome? I can't help but wonder if there were signs I missed, if I could have done something differently. Should I have pushed harder when Margaret started becoming distant? Should I have insisted on couples therapy? I've been spending a lot of time with Daphne, trying to keep things as normal as possible for her. But it's hard when my whole world feels like it's falling apart. I've told my parents and a couple of close friends what happened. They've been supportive, but I still feel so alone in this. How do you explain to people that the person you thought you knew better than anyone in the world has been living a double life? I keep replaying memories in my head, wondering if they were all lies. The family vacations, the quiet nights at home, the plans we made for the future, was any of it real? Or was Margaret just going through the motions while she was falling for someone else? I think about all the times she said she was working late, all the business trips, and I can't help but wonder how many of those were lies. I'm angry, not just at Margaret, but at Henry too. 
He knew she was married, knew we had a child, and still pursued her. We've met at company events, he's shaken my hand, made small talk about our families. All while he was sleeping with my wife. I've been tempted to confront him at work, but I know that would only make things worse. For now, I'm taking it one day at a time. I'm focusing on being there for Daphne and trying to keep myself together. But I can't help feeling lost and betrayed. How do you move forward when the person you trusted most in the world has shattered that trust? How do you co-parent with someone who's broken your heart? And how do you explain to a six-year-old that her family might never be the same again? I guess I'm writing this because I need advice, or maybe just someone to talk to who understands. Has anyone been through something similar? How did you handle it? I feel like I'm at a crossroads, and I don't know which way to turn. Any advice or words of support would be greatly appreciated. Update 1. It's been about a month since my last post, and a lot has happened. First, I want to thank everyone for their support and advice. Your words helped me through some of the darkest days I've ever experienced. After taking some time to think things over, I decided I couldn't just sweep Margaret's betrayal under the rug. The trust between us was broken, and I couldn't see a way to rebuild it. So, with a heavy heart, I told her I wanted a divorce. She cried and begged me to reconsider, saying she'd do anything to make it right. But I stood firm. I just couldn't see how I could ever trust her again. I met with a lawyer to discuss my options. He advised me to gather evidence of the affair, just in case things got messy. I hadn't wanted to do this initially, it felt wrong somehow, like I was invading Margaret's privacy. But I realized it was necessary to protect myself and Daphne. I asked Sarah, Margaret's colleague, if she would be willing to provide a written statement about the fake business trip. She agreed, feeling guilty about her unwitting role in the deception. I also went through our phone records and found countless calls and texts between Margaret and Henry over the past few months. It was painful to see the sheer volume of communication, to imagine all the time she'd been texting him while sitting next to me on the couch or across the dinner table. Then, something unexpected happened. I received an email from a woman named Emma, 31F. She introduced herself as Henry's wife and said she had recently discovered the affair too. We met for coffee, and she shared her side of the story. Apparently, Henry had been lying to both of us, telling Margaret he was separated and telling Emma he was working late nights. Emma and I decided to confront Margaret and Henry together. We arranged to meet them at a neutral location, a quiet cafe on the outskirts of town. The look on their faces when they saw us together was one I'll never forget. It was a mix of shock, guilt, and fear. At first, they tried to deny everything, but faced with the evidence we had gathered, they finally admitted to the full extent of their affair. It had been going on for nearly six months, much longer than Margaret had initially told me. They'd been meeting at hotels, in Henry's car, even at our house when I was away on a business trip. Each new revelation felt like another blow. What hurt the most was hearing Margaret talk about her feelings for Henry. She said she had fallen out of love with me years ago but stayed for Daphne's sake. She claimed she had tried to rekindle our relationship but eventually gave up. I couldn't help but think of all the times I'd tried to plan date nights or suggest couples activities, only to be shut down. Had she already checked out of our marriage by then? After the confrontation, I felt a strange mix of pain and relief. Pain because hearing the details of their betrayal hurt more than I expected, but relief because I finally knew the whole truth. There were no more lies, no more wondering. It was all out in the open. Emma and I have been in touch since then, supporting each other through this difficult time. It's been helpful to have someone who understands exactly what I'm going through. We've shared our frustrations, our fears, and our hopes for the future. There's nothing romantic between us, we're both too raw from our experiences, but it's nice to have a friend who truly gets it. As for Daphne, I've been trying my best to shield her from the worst of it. Margaret and I agreed to tell her that mommy and daddy are having some problems and need to live apart for a while. She's been asking a lot of questions, and it breaks my heart to see her confused and upset. She's always been a daddy's girl, and she doesn't understand why she can't see me every day anymore. I've started looking for a new place to live. I can't stand being in the house we shared, surrounded by memories of what I thought was a happy marriage. Every room seems to hold a reminder of Margaret, the kitchen where we used to cook together, the living room where we'd watch movies as a family, the bedroom where. Well, you get the idea. Margaret offered to move out, but I think a fresh start will be good for Daphne and me. Work has been challenging. Henry is still a consultant for the company, and seeing him around the office makes my blood boil. I've been thinking about looking for a new job, but with everything else going on, I'm not sure I can handle that change right now. For now, I'm just keeping my head down and trying to focus on my work. Financially, things are going to be tight for a while. We've always lived comfortably on our dual incomes, but supporting two households is going to be a stretch. I'm looking at ways to cut back on expenses and maybe pick up some freelance work on the side. It's stressful, but I'm determined to provide a stable life for Daphne. For now, I'm taking it one day at a time. Some days are better than others. On the good days, I can imagine a future where Daphne and I are happy, just the two of us. On the bad days, the pain and anger threaten to overwhelm me. I find myself dwelling on memories of happier times, wondering how it all went so wrong. But I'm staying strong for Daphne. She needs me now more than ever, and being there for her gives me purpose. I'm determined to show her that even when life doesn't go as planned, we can still find happiness. We've been spending a lot of quality time together, playing in the park, reading bedtime stories, baking cookies. Seeing her smile and laugh reminds me that there's still joy in the world. I know the road ahead won't be easy. There will be more difficult conversations, more painful revelations, more challenges to face. But I'm committed to moving forward, to building a new life for Daphne and me. It may not be the life I had planned, but I'm hopeful that it can still be a good one. Update 2. It's been three months since my last update, and life has taken some unexpected turns. The divorce proceedings are underway, and it's been a roller coaster of emotions. Margaret initially tried to contest the divorce, claiming that she had made a mistake and wanted to work things out. 
she started sending me long emails, reminiscing about our good times and promising she could change. For a brief moment, I found myself wavering. But then I remembered the look on her face when we confronted her and Henry, the callousness with which she had deceived me for months. I knew I couldn't go back. When I stood my ground on the divorce, Margaret changed tactics. She's now trying to get primary custody of Daphne, claiming that her job provides more financial stability. This custody battle has been the hardest part of the whole ordeal. The thought of not seeing Daphne every day is unbearable. She's been my rock through all of this, and the idea of her living primarily with Margaret, the person who tore our family apart, makes me sick. My lawyer assures me that we have a strong case for joint custody, given Margaret's infidelity and my active involvement in Daphne's life. We've been gathering character witnesses, Daphne's teachers, our neighbors, even some of Margaret's family members who disagree with her actions. But it's still nerve-wracking. The thought of a judge deciding my daughter's future keeps me up at night. On a more positive note, I found a new apartment. It's smaller than our house, but it's in a nice area with good schools. It's a two-bedroom place with a small balcony where I'm planning to start a little herb garden. Daphne seems to be adjusting well to the new place. We've been decorating her room together, which has been a fun distraction for both of us. She chose a space theme, and we spent a weekend painting glow-in-the-dark stars on her ceiling. Work has been another challenge. I finally couldn't take seeing Henry around the office anymore. Every time I saw him, I was reminded of the betrayal, and it was affecting my work performance. After much consideration, I decided to look for a new job. It was a tough decision, I'd been with Tech Corp for nearly a decade and had built a good reputation there. But I knew I needed a fresh start in all aspects of my life. After a few interviews, I landed a position at a smaller tech startup. The pay is slightly less, but the work environment seems much better, and the shorter commute means more time with Daphne. My new team seems great, and I'm excited about the challenges ahead. It feels good to be focusing my energy on something positive. Emma and I have remained friends throughout this process. We meet for coffee every couple of weeks, sharing updates on our divorces and offering each other support. There's nothing romantic between us, we're both too raw from our experiences, but it's nice to have someone who truly understands what I'm going through. She's been a great sounding board as I navigate this new chapter of my life. Last week, I had an unexpected encounter with Henry. I was at the grocery store with Daphne when we ran into him. He tried to apologize, saying he never meant to hurt anyone. I didn't make a scene for Daphne's sake, but I made it clear that his apology meant nothing to me. Seeing him only reinforced my decision to leave Tech Corp and start fresh. As for Margaret, our interactions have been limited to discussions about Daphne and the divorce. It's still painful to see her, to remember the life we had and the future we had planned. But each day, it gets a little easier. Daphne has started seeing a child therapist to help her process everything that's happening. It was hard for me to admit that she needed help beyond what I could provide, but I'm glad I made the decision. She seems to be opening up more and handling the changes better. The therapist suggested we establish new routines to give Daphne a sense of stability, so we've started having special father-daughter breakfasts on weekends and nightly story time. Financially, things are still tight, but I'm managing. I've had to dip into our savings to cover legal fees and the costs of setting up a new household, but I'm slowly getting back on track. I've started doing some freelance web design work on the weekends to bring in extra cash. It's not ideal, but it's helping to ease the financial strain. Looking ahead, I'm cautiously optimistic. The divorce should be finalized in a few months, and hopefully, the custody arrangement will be settled soon after. I'm focusing on building a new life for Daphne and me, one day at a time. It's not the life I had envisioned, but I'm starting to see glimmers of hope for the future. Update 3. It's been six months since my last update, and I'm happy to report that things are finally starting to look up. The divorce was finalized last month, and we've settled on a joint custody arrangement for Daphne. It's not perfect, but it's workable, and Daphne seems to be adjusting well. The custody battle was tough. Margaret tried to paint me as an uninvolved father, but, thankfully, I had plenty of evidence to the contrary. In the end, the judge ruled in favor of joint custody, with Daphne spending alternating weeks with each of us. It's been an adjustment for all of us, but we're making it work. Daphne has a calendar in both homes where she marks off the days until she switches, which seems to help her feel more in control of the situation. My new job has been going well. I've settled into my role and even received a small promotion recently. The team is great, and for the first time in a long time, I actually enjoy going to work. The startup atmosphere is energizing, and I feel like I'm really making a difference. It's a far cry from the toxic environment I left behind at Tech, Corp. Daphne has been my rock through all of this. She's shown incredible resilience and maturity for a six-year-old. The therapy sessions have really helped her process everything. She still has moments of sadness, especially during transitions between homes, but overall, she's doing much better. We've established new traditions in our apartment, like pizza and movie Friday nights, which give her something to look forward to. As for Margaret, I heard through the grapevine that things didn't work out with Henry. Apparently, once the excitement of the affair wore off, they realized they didn't have much in common. She's been trying to mend fences with me, suggesting we try to be friends for Daphne's sake. While I'm willing to be civil for our daughter, I've made it clear that friendship isn't on the table. It's still too raw, too painful. Maybe someday we'll get there, but for now, I'm focusing on healing and moving forward. Emma and I are still in touch. She started dating again, which gave me the courage to consider it too. I've been on a few casual dates, nothing serious yet, but it's nice to feel like I'm moving forward. It's strange to be back in the dating world after so many years, but I'm taking it slow and being cautious about introducing anyone to Daphne. Last week, Daphne had a school play. It was the first big event since the divorce where Margaret and I were both present. I was worried it would be awkward, but we managed to keep things cordial and focus on Daphne. Seeing her face light up when she saw both of us in the audience made all the difficulty worth it. We even managed to take a family photo afterward, for Daphne's sake. It wasn't easy, but it felt like a step in the right direction. 
Looking back on the past year, I can hardly believe how much has changed. There were times when I thought I'd never smile again, never trust again. But here I am, building a new life for myself and Daphne. Our apartment is starting to feel like home, and we're creating new memories together every day. I won't pretend it's been easy. There are still days when the pain of betrayal hits me out of nowhere. But those days are becoming fewer and farther between. I'm learning to trust again, to open myself up to new possibilities. To anyone going through something similar, I want to say, it gets better. It might not feel like it now, but you're stronger than you think. Focus on the people who truly care about you, and don't be afraid to ask for help when you need it. As for me, I'm looking forward to the future for the first time in a long time. Daphne and I have plans to take a small vacation next month, just the two of us. We're going to a beach town a few hours away, where we can build sandcastles and collect seashells. It's not the life I had planned, but I'm starting to realize that sometimes, the unexpected path can lead to beautiful destinations.